Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create a VR button for your VR gamer application. We're going to be creating an actual physical button that you can press instead of a UI one. So the first thing you want to do is create a button empty object and put it at 0, 1, 0 just to lift it so the player can press it. And then from there what we want to do is create a cylinder under it and we want to reduce the size of the cylinder. And we're going to call it base because this is going to be the base of the button. So we'll set it to 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 .1, and 0 0.1. And then we want to change the material of the base. Let's make it a black color. And then after that, what we want to do is we want to duplicate it and call this press. Now, this press object is the button that we're going to be actually pressing. Let's reduce its size a little bit. And then from there, let's lift it up and change the material. So again, let's put it at 0, 0, 0 0.015 and then let's change the material to a red material. And as you can see, we now have our button object. After that, what we want to do is we want to delete this capsule collider and we want to add a box collider. And as you can see, here we have our box collider, but let's decrease the size a little bit so it fits the button better and then after that what we want to do is we want to go ahead to our normal view and make sure that it is good okay perfect we now have our collider next thing we want to do is we're going to duplicate our press object and call this object collider and then we're going to delete this collider from this press object and the reason we're deleting it is because we want the collider to be on a separate object. And as you can see, we have it on the collider object. And that's why we duplicated it. And now we're going to remove the meshes from the collider. And what we're going to have left is just an object with a collider. And that's it. And you can see that uh, through disabling the press uh, game object, you can still have the other collider object. Perfect. So now that we have that set up, what we want to do next is add some components to our collider. What we want to add is first of all a rigid body. And we want to set this rigid body to is kinematic and remove user gravity. Next, what we want to do is we want to add an audio source for the clicking sound. And I already have an, a sound here ready. You can import any sound you like and just import it into the audio clip. After that, what we want to do is create a new script and we want to call this script v, uh, button VR. And this script is going to control our, all the button functionality for our VR button. And we're going to drag the script into the scripts folder. And then now we're just going to go ahead and edit our script and start writing the code for it. So the first thing we want to do is delete the update function and we're going to keep the start one because we're going to be using it later. Then we're going to import unity engine.events and we're going to declare some variables. We're going to declare a button game object to unity events on press and on release, a game object presser for the person that's going to be pressing the button and then an audio source sound for the sound effects and a boolean is pressed to check if the button is pressed in the start function we want to assign a get component audio source to sound and we want to set as pressed to false next we want to have the on trigger enter which tri triggers when a collider enters our uh, button and we want to check first of all that it's not pressed already and then we're going to change the position our button to the new position, which is going to be the pressed position. After that, we want to set the presser to the other dog game object. And then we want to invoke the on press event and play the sound. Lastly, we want to set is pressed equal to true. Now on the trigger exit, when the collider leaves 
the barn. We want to make sure, first of all, that the collider that's leaving is the one that entered and pressed it in the first place. Then we're going to reset the button position to its original position. After that, we want to invoke on release. And then we want to set is press to false. Lastly, we want to create a function that we're going to trigger and put it inside the on release event. And then for this function, we're just going to call it spawn sphere and we're going to create a new sphere and just uh, set the local scale to a smaller scale and then add a rigid body and change the position to a new position. You can add any function that you want inside of the Unity event, but I'm just making just a random one just to test it out. And lastly, we want to make sure that the other dot game object to make sure that we're checking for the game object. Now that we're back in Unity, as you can see, we have our events and our button game object. We're going to drag the press object into the button component. And for the on press event, we're going to leave it empty and we're going to add something to the on release, which is when we release the button. And we're going to add the function that we created, the spawn sphere one, but you can add any function that you like and make the button do anything. After that, what we want to do is go ahead and go to our project settings and then go to our layers. And we want to add two layers. First of all, the hands layers and then the interactive layer. And the interactive layer is going to be for our button and the hands layer is going to be for our hands. And we're going to go to the physics and then we're going to make sure that the hands and the interactive are colliding with each other. And the interactive is only interacting, uh, I mean colliding with the hands. Next thing, we want to change the button layer to our interactive layer and select yes, change children. And then do change the hands to the hands layer. And also we're going to select yes, change children. Lastly, we want to go ahead and remove our capsule collider from our base. And we want to set the collider on the collider object to is triggered. Now we're ready and we can go ahead and test on our headset. As you can see, we can now go to our button and when we press it, it will spawn a sphere. We can now do anything that we want simply by adding the function to on press or on release events. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.